Uh, it was actually a kind of somewhat obscure reference from uh, a movie called The Science of Sleep by a director called Michel Gondry. Um, he actually directed the Everlong Foo Fighters clip um, with the giant hands as well, so it was kind of a reference to a nightmare he had a kid, as a kid, um, as far as we understand it at least. Um, but yeah, it was just kind of a, a reference, a little quote from that movie that something just felt about it just felt like it was right for what we were doing, like it felt like it fit the music and kind of fit, fit the aesthetic we were going for. Not, not really any significant meaning to it other than, you know, just yeah it's uh it's kind of a little bit esoteric and it's memorable and it, it alliterates which is always good <laughs> hey my name is trenton i sing for hands like houses and you're watching the buzz artist spotlight To be honest, we actually kind of had our first real break over here. Um, we recorded over here just purely because of a fl fluke of economics. The Australian dollar was really, really strong during the the kind of recovery from the, the recession, um, the GFC in 2008-2009, and we um, the Australian dollar was just doing really well at the time, and so it was actually cheaper for us to come over here and record an album than it was to record it in Australia at the time. And um, through that, we just kind of developed some relationships uh, through the, you know, through the different bands that came through that studio that were part of that kind of little alumni of that. It was like quite a tight knit community around that studio at the time, and we met a few of them, and we um, got in touch with our American management, who kind of shopped us out to a few labels here, and um, Rise ended up picking us up, and we ended up with this, uh, yeah, this kind, of, you know, this first record and a few great touring opportunities that came up pretty early. Um, and yeah, so I mean, I wouldn't say we've had like a real significant moment, like hey, that's when we made it. Uh, that's when we broke out because I think we've been that band that just slowly, slowly builds one step at a time. Um, but yeah, like we, we kind of did a lot better here for a long time. Australia, we struggled for a long time, but then we just had a whole bunch of stuff happen in 12 months. Um, and yeah, we ended up just with massive audiences over there. Like we're just going into doing our biggest headline tour to date in Australia, uh, playing like kind of 1500 to 2000 cap rooms in Australia, which we're pretty excited about in February. Um, and you know, UK and Europe have both been really strong lately. So yeah, we've been really lucky to do well pretty much everywhere. Um, but yeah, we've certainly got our first kind of real, you know, breakthrough sort of opportunities over here. You know me well, but at least in as far as I can tell, you should have known better than telling me I should have held it together for us. But I'm barely together myself. Whatever music we make as the five of us is going to have our collective fingerprint on it. It's going to have a certain sense of, I guess, substance and foundation that's always based on who we are and the way that we write music. Um, but I, th I think that this time around, we, we definitely approached it a lot differently. We gave ourselves a lot of time to write a bunch of different songs and see how it was starting to fit together as a whole collective. Um, but we've always tried to write songs that just are reflective of who we are, what we're listening to at the time, um, you know, what music's doing well, and kind of just where we feel like we fit in the music world. And so. Um, there's always been a bit of a, you know, we've tried to take one sensible step, what, you know, a, maybe a big step and this may be the biggest step, but to us it doesn't feel like this album is more different to the last one than Dissonance was to the one before it, and likewise Unimaginable to Dick Ground Dweller, like all the different albums we've had, we've taken a pretty substantial, like, stylistic step each time, but we've tried to carry through a sense of identity in a certain journey that is us and that is, so I think that it may, I think, I, I think the reason a lot of people feel like Anon is a lot different uh, more different than anything else is just purely because I think in terms of direction it's a, maybe a different direction if not like you know if not, if not necessarily a bigger step it's just a step in a different direction that I think people will maybe expecting from us I don't know um, but all in all like I mean the response has been fantastic we've made a bunch of new fans especially through the WWE Monday Night Football spots we've been getting over here um, and the radio you know we got uh, Triple J feature album in Australia which is a very big deal back home um, with a, with a number four record in Australia for that week. So that was, you know, 
that was really cool. Um, and yeah, the, the response across the shows we've done in the last two months has just been wild wherever we are in the world and even to the new songs are getting us as much excitement and enthusiasm as anything from before it. So yeah, we're, we're stoked. It certainly feels like we've broken into a lot of, uh, I guess, a wider, you know, a wider perception of who we are and what we do. I think with the, we've, obviously, with the WWE and the Monday Night Football, I think we've reached that new audience and kind of, I think, made people a bit more aware that, hey, we're not just this little warp to a band, like we are a band that is kind of, has the capacity to do bigger, you know, much bigger and much more substantial things in the wider you know the wider music world um and you know look we don't take that for granted we don't certainly don't expect that anything crazy is going to happen but i mean crazy shit has already happened and we're still kind of getting our heads around like what that actually means and seeing how that translates to you know what we're doing night by night um so you know it's it's been really really cool just to kind of see yeah just see that reach and get those big opportunities and like i said we've been a band that's built one step at a time but this is feeling you know there's still this energy and excitement for the future of the record even though it's already out which is pretty cool and I think that's a new one for us. And I think the music for us is the most important thing. It's the one we, what we want people to connect with first. That's why we call the album Anon is because we wanted the music to be that, you know, the shareable thing, the something that people remember more so than who we are or what we've done before. Because that doesn't really matter when you're listening to an album. You know, we want people to embrace it as its own, as its own energy, you know, energy, its own beast, its own entity. So, um, but yeah, just chuck a search, hands like houses. Don't think anything's going to come up other than us. So. <laughs> Yeah, go from there and see where you end up. G'day, it's Trent from Hands Like Houses, and you've been buzzed.